Hi, it's Martin, and welcome to another video on my Knit365 YouTube channel. Today's video is my 2022 wrap-up. I've got a list of things that I've made, and I've got a bit of footage coming up where I've done a bit of a slideshow, that's right, of finished photographs to show you all the things that I finished last year. And as I was pulling that together, it was really interesting because there's lots of stuff that I made things that I made that I'd forgotten about. So it was really lovely to revisit that. So we'll have that coming up. I've got a couple of finished objects to share with you for things that I finished um, in the last week of 2022. Um, I am still feeling a bit croaky. I think we can make it through without me blowing my nose, touch wood. I'm much better. Um, those of you that followed me through Vlogmas know that I got a cold while I was away um, and then I came home and I felt a lot better and then all of my family have been ill all over Christmas. <laughs> Everyone's had the family cold and flu. Um, the nieces have been poorly since like the beginning of December. It's just, I think there's so much of it going around. Um, so if I sound a bit gravelly and a bit croaky or I need a sip of tea, and you know when I say tea, I really mean coffee it's a thing, um, then yeah, I'm just going to need to take <clears throat> breaks to clear my throat. But it's fine. Winter ills, I was going to say winter pains, it's not painful, I'm just, yeah, I don't know where I'm going with this now. General coldy fluey. So yeah, bit of a wrap up video now today where I'll get to talk about the things that I got up to during 2022. It won't be a particularly long video because we're just going to run through finished objects. I'm not going to talk too much about my crafting plans for 2023. That will come up in a separate video because I have, I was going to say I have big plans, but I have plans, like I've mentioned this before, I'm not buying wool in 2023. There are caveats. I've made a list of approved caveats when I'm allowed to buy wool, such as um, being at an in-person yarn show. So when I go to East Anglia Yarn Festival at the end of March, I will be allowed to buy some wool because I'm going all the way to Norwich. It's five hours from the flat. I deserve a reward for all that driving. So I'm not going, I'm not like completely on a yarn ban, um, but I worked out, and this is why I'm going to talk about this more in another video because I want to do a stash tour with you because I think in my head I've got enough wool in my stash to make like five jumpers for me and four or five shawls and there's like there's big quantities of yarn in there and I only buy yarn for a specific purpose so I feel like I need to start doing some of that and making the yarn fulfill its purpose so I want to go through that so there'll be another video in Two or three weeks time, maybe. Um, but that is my plan for 2023. And finish some works in progress. And again, I haven't counted my works in progress because I looked back through my last... I've got a little book. Oh, my mum bought me this for my birthday one year. Look at that. Martin's craft book. Um, <clears throat> I looked back through and I can't make head nor tail of my whips. <laughs> because I think it's 14, but I think it might be 16 or maybe even 12. Like, I, I genuinely don't know. And you can't see that bit of the flat at the moment. But if you've seen some of the Vlogmas where the Christmas tree is, between the Christmas tree and the sofa is just a pile of project bags. So I need, to, when the tree goes down, we're going to start taking the decks down today. Oh, I should have said, it's currently Bank Holiday Monday in the UK, 2nd of January. Um, <clears throat> bonus day off today for Mark and I, then we're back to work properly tomorrow. Mm, boo. Um... But the tree and then some of the decorations are going to start to come down today. And then I can get all my whips out and I can count them all again. And then we can reset for 2023 <laughs> and start again. Which is why that's going to come in a later video. So, a slip of coffee. So, I have... I've got two finished objects, definitely, for December. And then probably another three or four. But I'm going to... I'll talk about... the birds in a moment. So finished objects. Um, you've seen this one, so I'm not going to um, dwell on it, linger on it. Um, this is Asta, the Toft Advent Bird. 
Um, <clears throat> I showed her off at the end of Vlogmas. Um, so she is obviously a finished object for December. Woohoo! I love her hair. I'd love hair like that. So she is super cool. So much beading. Like, I'm really glad I did it. And it was a lot of fun, but yeah, time consuming. And like I said in one of my Vlogmas videos, I got behind um, while we were in Copenhagen. Because I think I'd like, I'd gone out and I'd left the beads in the hotel so that I couldn't do the beads. And then by the time I got back then, after we'd had dinner, we then had a shower and we got ready to go out for the night. Well, then the following day, then it's like, oh, right, I need to do the beads. And then I hadn't done that. Day. And you just quickly get behind. And that's what I did. <laughs> but I'm really glad I've done her. She's lovely. She's going to live somewhere. She might live on this bookshelf. Um, we've had a bit of a freshen up of the bookshelves. For those of you that have been here for a while, um, we have some white bookshelves now, which we um, did in between Christmas and New Year to... Um, yeah, just bring some white in and some lightness. Um, and then this bookshelf here, um, my mum and dad were... I can't do this in reverse. <laughs> um, my mum and dad were um, changed some of the furniture in their house, so we've had their bookshelf. So you can just see... I don't write... Oh, I did that first time. Can you see where my finger is there? You can just make out the edge of a queen. Um, so my plan with my women who make history dolls... Um, they're going to live on the bookshelf because there's only like eight or nine of them. So I'll take out some books and then put like two dolls in a shelf um, and then they'll be like a feature as part of the book wall. That's my plan. But I think Asta might live where the corks are now or on this one um, and then her tail can um, drape down because I feel like that needs to be on show. So the tail can drape down on the bookshelf. <clears throat> Check back in the next video because it may not be. I haven't run that past Mark yet. He might be like, mm, no, no, no. Um, so I'm not sure where she's going to live at the moment, but I finished Asta and then, um, I'm not, I'm counting this as a finished object, but I'm not really, um, I made a little hat. <laughs> um, I think I mentioned this in one of my Vlogmas videos, Toff do, it's called Ed's Extravagant or Ed Stravaganza, um, and random parcels get, um, free gifts basically. So ooh, I can get the pattern. My, I won a free gift um, in my parcel and I won the kit to make this little hat. So I had the wool, uh, which is their festive silver, which I don't know if I turn it inside out, you might be able to see, you can see the sparkle. Um, and then <laughs> more beads. So um, I've done all the beading on that. And then the idea is that the Toft Creations wear the hat. So I made that and I did that straight away because I was in the beaded mindset from doing Asta. So I wanted to carry on with that. And so I finished the beads. So that will also go back in the Christmas box now with the poinsettia and the birds. Um, so I made a little hat. And then the final one for 2022, which I finished New Year's Eve. We've been so poorly with this heavy cold. We were originally planned on going out. We were going to go to London for New Year. And then we were just like, I can't. We can't cough. My chest is hurting from all the coughing. Um, <clears throat> so we stayed in and I did crochet. Woohoo! Rock and roll. We were, in, we were asleep by 11 o'clock. Um, but let me introduce you to Bran. Now, Bran is my Q4 entry for the Imaginist competition. So um, I'll pop two video links um, below because I made two project videos where I went from starting to do my drawing through to the finished object um, in previous Imaginists. So this is a, a competition um, run by Toft where you design your own monster. So the only requirement is that you use the standard head and body form. Um, the rest of it, I don't have the book with me, but if you watch those videos, you'll see what I mean. The, the book is a flip book, so you can choose a head, um, arms and legs or feet. Um, and it, there's met, like thousands of combinations that you can get by mixing and matching. And each quarter, Kerry chooses a colour palette and you basically do your monster, you design your own monster using that quarter's colours. So this quarter we had camel, red, 
black and cream and we had 50 grams of red and then 25 grams of the other colors and I was I bought the wool because I didn't have any red in my stash um, or didn't have enough red in my stash bought the wool <clears throat> vlogmas happened going on holiday cowls um and I was like I'm not gonna do it I'm just not gonna get enough time and then when we decided we weren't going to London I was like no come on, I can do it, I can do it. I had no idea what I was going to make. So I stood in the kitchen with Mark while he was making some food. We had a glass of Prosecco, which may or may not have helped the cold. Um, and I had my iPad and I did some drawings. Um, oh, actually, let me tell you what, let me pop a picture on screen now. So that's my concept drawing. So he's not too dissimilar. There's less horns on the on the head, but that was my concept drawing that I did with Mark. And we decided then um, to do this kind of ombre effect because I only had 25 grams of camel and then 50 grams of red, as I said. So I knew I wouldn't have enough. I'd have enough to do him all in red, but I kind of, I wanted to steer away from festive because the idea is that you enter your monster into a competition. And if you're a winner, there's one golden ticket winner each quarter. And your monster wins, you win a golden patch, but also your monster then gets turned into a kit. So the Imaginist monsters are all like a bluey grey colour palette. So if my monster won, then he gets t transformed into the bluey grey monster colours and becomes an official kit that you can go and buy on Toff's website, which is super cool. But I did it because I wanted us to join in at the beginning of the year because I don't think I'm very creative in as much as using colours and techniques, I'm very, very disciplined at following a pattern. If the pattern says do X, Y, Z, I will do X, Y, Z. I'm not very good at adapting it. So I wanted to be a bit more creative this year, um, which is why, creative, which is why I wanted to do Imaginists. And I actually feel like I'm a little bit more creative than I give myself credit for, because once I get thinking about it, then the juices start flowing and I'm like, ah, oh, look what I've made. Um, but I really enjoyed doing Bran. Um, if you want to know the pattern and you have the Imaginists book, go and check out my Instagram and you can see my recipe. But the idea is that he is a fire monster. He's just emerged from a volcano in Norway and he's all red and brown from the rocks and the lava. And then his arms and hands he's scattering ash and dust wherever he goes that's the black and the white from the volcano so that was my inspiration um he's got this really cute tail which <clears throat> it's that tail from the book um but again i've put the fronds on to signify the the ash um and just from the photography purposes <laughs> i popped a double pointed needle um in the tail so that i can pin it in so I need to tell Mark that that's what I've done because at some point I'm going to want to make socks and I'm only going to have four DPNs instead of a fifth one. And I'm going to be like, how have I lost a double pointed needle? And if I say that on camera, you can all shout, it's in bronze tail. Um, so there we are. <laughs> so that was my final finished object for 2022. And I really love him. I loved Cynthia the monster. She was my favourite for this year. And I think Bron has quickly taken over as my favourite. I love the horns. I love the ombre effect. First time I've ever done a crochet ombre. That was fun. Because you're increasing and decreasing at the same time as colour changing. So in the end I had to turn the telly off. And I had Mark with the pattern uh, for the colour changes. And I had the pattern for the shaping. And we were literally counting stitch by stitch. Mark did not have fun. But he did it, bless him. So I thank him for that. So that was Bron. Bran. Did I say Bron a few times? Bran it is, which means fire in Norwegian. I think. Hold on, he's in the bedroom. Mark! Yeah. Is he Norwegian? Yeah. yeah. Bran apparently means fire in Norway. So... The only other finished objects there that I want to show are, I'm going to have to stand up for this. If you've watched the short, you know what I'm going to reveal. 
but I finished my birds. So this stand, hi, this stand I got from Ikea um, last year and I saw the stand and I thought that would be amazing for the birds and then set on my 12 month journey of making the birds. So we have the, the, the pear, obviously from the partridge, the partridge in a pear tree. Um, but if I move you slowly up. So we were working on him in December. This was Umpa Lumpa Bird. <laughs> I think he's the pheasant. Oh yeah, Gilbert the pheasant he was. So we were also working on John the woodpecker. Oh, I've taken them off now. This is not going to go well. They're all going to fall. John the woodpecker. Um, we also worked on, I think, Lois the cormorant. I had to do four, basically, didn't I? I can't remember what the four were. I definitely made this one and this one. So that's two, three. Oh, and uh, four. Beatrice, I think. So I made four birds in December, <clears throat> which it was a brilliant 12 month challenge if I'd actually done it in, and I did do it in 12 months, but my plan was to do one a month, as you know, and I got behind. But hey, life gets in the way, right? And this is a no stress, stress-free podcast. So I, I did it. I finished them in the 12 months. I'm so chuffed that I did. Um, another one just fell. Um, and you know, I love to polish my halo when we do good things. And when we do finished objects, we like to polish the halo, but we also polish the halo, especially when we use stash and all of those birds were made from my stash. Definite halo polish. Apart from I had to buy two 25 gram balls of black to make um, Peter the Blackbird and the legs of something else. I think I didn't have any black in my stash. Um, they're all toft yarn. Um, so it was really cool, which probably says something about the amount of stash that I had. I don't have a lot of toft wool yet left now. Though. So again, so there's an, there's an exception on my uh, I can buy yarn list because... One of the things I want to do next year is make more of my creations to match the patches that I've got. Because I'm doing my patch projects. I want to have one of every item that matches the patches. But I know I'm therefore going to run out of yarn because I've used up a lot of my stash. So if there's a project in mind, like a, a, a patch, then I will be allowed to buy wool for that. See, I've got caveats. It's basically my wool. So I can just like make up the wools as I go along, can't I? Um, but yeah, that was all made with stash, which was brilliant. Apart from that 50 gram ball that I had to buy or 225 grams. Um, so I spent 12 pound on wool last year to make those birds because I had it all in my stash. So it was such a great stash busting project. Um, I don't know what the math is, but I think roughly speaking, each bird takes about 75 grams of wool in various colors you could definitely get a whole bird out of a hundred gram ball so if you were thinking of joining in and doing your own toft 12 birds project now this year in 2023 um it is a great little stash buster if you've got lots of different colors and 25 30 grams of each color you know you can do lots of the birds um in just the odds and sods that you've got from your stash which is great so i'm really pleased that i got those done which is a big achievement. I'm not doing a year-long project this year. Last year I did the birds, the year before last I did the baubles, which I showed you, the knitted baubles. I'm not doing a year-long project this year. I have lots of things I want to do this year. Again, we'll talk about that in the, the 2023 video, um, but I'm not setting myself a hard and fast deadline. There's no, I've got to do this this month, otherwise I'll get behind. I've done that for two years now. It was okay, and if I stayed on track, then that's fine, but I know what I'm like. <laughs> and I did, it was the same with the baubles. I was on track until like July or August, and then I got behind and waylaid and things happened. So 
that's all my finished objects. Um, so why don't we roll the footage um, and let me show you, as a reminder, all of the things that I have um, made in 2022. You watch that. I'm going to go make myself another cup of coffee and I'll see you back here in a couple of minutes. Hi, welcome back. <laughs> I hope that you enjoyed seeing a bit of a wrap up. So in summary, because I've made a list, I made two pairs of socks, three and a half jumpers slash cardigans. The half obviously being Mark's jumper. We're not going to talk about it. We're going to move on. So three and a half jumpers cardigans. Um, I made four monsters. I did 15 toys slash birds. Um, two dolls, and I counted the dolls separate to the toys because they're a lot of work and a lot more work than the standard Toft creations. Um, I did three blankets, two shawls, three hats, and 
two miscellaneous, <laughs> which would be my little um, hat and the wrestling squares that I contributed to the, um, the, the wrestling jumper. So <clears throat> that is a hell of a lot of crafting. And sometimes I love having this channel, and I've said this in a few videos before, I love the fact that I feel like you all keep me accountable in my creating. And I know sometimes I get a bit like, oh, I've got to do 10 rows today, otherwise I'm not going to be on track. And if I only do eight, well, how am I going to do 12 tomorrow? And some of you find that incredibly stressful. For me, that's actually quite motivational because by breaking it down into bite-sized chunks, I can see where I'm going. But some months I can get to like week three of the month and I'm like, I haven't finished anything. What am I going to talk about? <clears throat> so it kind of drives me on to give me um, the impetus to get some stuff finished. But it's really interesting then to just to take a step back and look at all of the things I've done. And I forget about some things. Like I forgot about the, I started January with socks to match your shawl that I did socks to match last year's MCAL and Noah's Penguino jacket I forgot about. And it's just sometimes the little things you forget that you've done. So I love having my little journal. I love having this channel. And this channel started as a way of almost an interactive blog because I do have a written blog that I've not really blogged on in two years, maybe. Um, and this was a way of me being a bit more interactive with my blogging. So again, I kind of like taking that step back in December and almost reminding myself what I've made throughout the year. And actually some months when I'm beating myself up thinking, I haven't finished anything, actually I've finished quite a lot. And if I've got 14 things or 16 things or 12 or whatever I've got <laughs> still outstanding, I'm going to finish more of those this year. Um, and I'm really excited about some of the things. I'm going to, Mark's jumper is a January thing. I've got one thing that I want to finish <clears throat> this week, uh, this weekend. I might finish it today. Um, and then I'm kind of going to go on to Mark's jumper and we're going to get it done. But then I'm excited for loads of other stuff. Like I've got some lovely Labby NMA wool in my stash that I bought two years ago to make my mum a love note sweater. It's this gorgeous green with a mohair. Oh, it's lush. Not made it. It was going to be a birthday. Then it was going to be a Christmas. Then it was going to be Nat Lasher's birthday. Then it was going to be Christmas. So I've got loads of stuff in my stash that I'm really excited to dig out and get going on. So that's my plan for this year. But do you keep a similar list? Let me know in the comments below. Do you have a little notebook? How do you remind yourselves of the things that you've done? Because I guess it's so easy for us as crafters to make things, especially if we're gifting them. You make them and you give them away. You kind of forget sometimes, or I certainly do, that you've made them. So I think it's really nice to take a step back and go, oh, wow, I did make a lot <clears throat> in 2022. It was a productive year. Um, I only started this book last year, so I could probably go back and watch last year's wrap up and see did I make more or less than I did the year before. But <clears throat> I'm fine with that. Can you tell I've had some coffee now and it's now making me even more froggy. I'm fine with not comparing this year to last year. Different things happened. The year before we were in COVID, I probably made more because we were all stuck at home. I don't know. Anyway... So that's <clears throat> mostly it for this wrap-up video now. It was just a chance for me to take some time and sit down and talk to you about what I got up to in 2022. There is loads in plan on this channel for 2023, and I'm so excited about the stuff. We've got some yarn shows, so I'm going to the East Anglia Yarn Festival in March. I can't wait to get to that show. It's a new to me show. I've never been there before, but they've got like a knit and a social on the Friday night. There's a podcasters meetup. Um, it's in the Norwich showground. I'll put Norfolk showground. Um, I think it's the 17th and 18th of March. I'll pop it in the description box below. But more information coming up about that. I'm going to get Laura, the organiser, along onto my channel. We're going to do a little bit of an interview so she can tell you all about the show. I'm doing a mini series this year, um, sort of sheep to skein, where um, I've been chatting to a lovely lady from a farm about two hours away from here. And we're going to go and meet the sheep and see them being shorn and take the wool, take the fleeces to the um, 
the mill and see them spun and then see them hand dyed. Um, so I've got that little mini series come in. Um, loads of other things that if I can make them happen, it will be super fun. Um, and of course, the most important one that is going to kickstart the year now is the collaboration. So I've been popping up a few little shorts Slightly different for me because I don't really do a lot of shorts. I've tried to do a few more reels on Instagram because Instagram wants you to do reels. Um, but I popped a few shorts up on here. But for those of you that don't enjoy watching the shorts or haven't seen watching the shorts, um, I've announced all the details for my first Knit365 collaboration. Um, it's going to be a knit along and a crochet along. And I'm so excited to be working with three amazing um artists we've got Gemma from the little grey girl of course there was only going to be one dyer that could get on board with my first collaboration so um I've been to Gemma's we've had a play we've dyed some yarn I've chosen the colors and Gemma's come up with this amazing variegated speckled creation I'm not saying anymore um so Gemma's dyed some yarn that you could all get your hands on if you want to contribute and support the channel and Gemma um with um our knit 365 exclusive colorway that will only be available for this collaboration and then I'm working with Hannah Goff from Jamanda Cottage Crafts Hannah is our crochet designer and has come up with a crochet pattern to use that yarn or your own yarn if you have your own yarn in the stash um to make the item and then Louise Tilbrook is our knitting designer um who's made the knit version and I'm just so excited to do something completely different I've never done this before I've never produced anything really so to be able to kind of produce this collaboration get these three amazing artists on board and the idea will be in the next week or so I need to fix the date up because the patterns are still out for testing so when we have the finished patterns and they're ready for launch um we will get a video together with me Gemma Hannah and Louise and we will show you the yarn we'll show you the patterns and then you can go away purchase the pattern only purchase the yarn only purchase the yarn and the pattern you can do what you want um <clears throat> and then that will be early to mid January um, and then the we're going to do a crochet along and a knit along that starts in early March. My birthday is the 5th of March. We think it'll be around my birthday. I'm not going to make either of the items until we start in March. So I'm going to make it along with you. So we'll have some um, check-in videos. We might do a couple of lives where you can ask questions of the designers if you're stuck on elements of the pattern. Um, real community feel that we want to try and, um, and, and get going and generate, which will be really exciting. Um, so I've seen all the patterns, um, but of course I'm not testing, I'm not involved in them because I want to wait and I want to do it with you folks so that I'm part of the community when we do it. Um, I haven't said, I don't think what we're making, but whatever we're making, it's the same in crochet and knitting. And that was one of the most important things for me is... We'll say the word again, bistitual, because I am a knitter who can crochet. Um, and that's how I think of myself. I'm definitely a knitter and then a crocheter. I've made one crochet shawl before and I've made a crochet blanket, but that's it. My crochet skills are pretty much limited to amigurumi style crochet. So I'm really excited to do the crochet item as well as the knit. But what I've asked Hannah and Louise to do is so that neither craft feels left out, um, they've created an item that is very similar in style and shape. So when you hold said item up, you can tell that they're different because one is knit and one is crochet, but they will look similar. They'll have a similar shape um, and a similar style. Um, and I'm so excited that we're doing something like that because I've not seen a lot of that before. You either see knit alongs or crochet alongs. It's very rare, I think. They, I'm not saying I'm the first one to do it. There will have been people that do this, but there's not that. it's not that common to have a knit and a crochet along doing a very similar pattern at the same time. So I'm really excited. And they were both up for the challenge. Hannah especially, bless her, because of course I want this to be a one scheme project because then that's the link in with Gemma and being able to use an exclusive to Gemma um, yarn. 
But of course, crochet uses a lot more yarn than knitting does. So Hannah's had the head scratching problem about how does she make an item using just one skein in crochet? And she's come up with a technique that we can use to make sure we don't run out of yarn um, is the plan. So it's in test at the moment. So like you could tell I'm really excited um, and I can't wait to show it all to you or uh, show it to you all and and get going. So I'm not going to be specific on a date. I think it will be in the next week, the next one to two weeks. I'll hopefully have the launch video ready because what we've done is when I went to Gemma's, we have dyed 50 skeins. We have no idea how popular this is going to be. We might dye 50 skeins and one or two of you want the exclusive Knit365 colorway. Um, <clears throat> they might all sell out in 10 minutes. I have no idea because this is the first time we've done this. Um, so we have a number of skeins ready to ship and then there will be a pre-order open for probably seven to 10 days for anybody else to get in and Gemma will then dye the pre-orders as they um as they she gets them um with enough time to ship worldwide she's happy to not limit it to just the UK so Gemma will ship worldwide as she does with her little grey girl business there's worldwide shipping on everything um will ship in time to start in March so by doing it early January we have enough time for Gemma to dye the yarn and to ship it in time for you all to start um if you're using the knit 365 yarn um to start with us um early january um early january early march around my birthday happy birthday to me so that's the most exciting thing that's coming so i'll be back with that video in the next week or so and then depending on when that video is going to be i'll then be back with my 2023 plans so i need to check in with um hannah and louise today and see how the patterns go in and how the testings go in we can pencil that video in and then i will be back around that time with my 2023 stash dive once we've taken the tree down and i can get in my crates and i can find all my bits and i'll film all of that for you so yeah lots and lots coming up and yeah i'm just i love the fact that i just get to sit down and chat to you and there's been so many of you new uh, followers and subscribers who've come to join and you're all very welcome. It's great to see the channel continuing to grow. Um, I had something on one of my Facebook, Twitter memory things that popped up. And I think even like two years ago, we had just like 700 subscribers, I think it was, or just under a thousand. And now we've got over 7,000, which is just... Yeah, I can't thank you all enough for being here and um, and supporting my channel. So if you are new here and you aren't a subscriber, hit that subscribe button. It doesn't cost you anything to subscribe, but it helps me to grow my channel. If you've liked this video, give it a thumbs up um, because it helps the algorithm and helps other people find my videos. Um, and yeah, if you are a returning viewer, thank you so much for coming back. Um, thank you to all those that found me during the um, the Stephen West um knit along i've got wool to make three west knit sweaters and four west knit shawls i think we'll go through that i've got a load i've got a big steven list so if you're west knits fans stick around because i've got a load of west knits patterns in my queue that i want to get done this year um so i'm going to wrap this video up and then i can splice all the bits together and then get this live on the youtube um, Monday afternoon. I'm now going to finish my coffee and then start to put the Christmas decorations down. Boo. But thank you very much for being here. I hope you are. Oh, that's Alexa. Alexa, stop. Uh, that's the timer for Mark's bread. Um, <clears throat> he's making sourdough. Flush. Um, so yeah, thank you so much for being here. I hope you're as excited as I am for the collaboration especially, but for some of the plans that I have for the channel for this year um a brand new page in january time to get some planning in um that q a video will come at some point as well we've still got all the questions <laughs> that we need to do so there's loads of things i've got a big list of content and things that i want to do this year so thank you very much for being here um so i will let you go because mark now needs to come and finish his bread so um thank you very much and until we speak again happy crafting <laughs> <laughs>